Another great feature of Zucchini 3 Series is the ability to create panels on based on your schematic. Now, this schematic that we we're working on earlier, um, I have just connected it up a little bit more. As you can see, it's extremely messy and it's all over the place. However, it should give us an idea of how easy it is to convert a schematic such as this into a panel. So all I need to do quite simply is create from, uh, to begin with, I'll just create a panel sheet. Um, so I'll just draw down my scale a little to one to five. Um, so I've created a panel sheet and all I need to do now is go over here to the bottom left and I click on panel not placed. The panel not placed is actually going to show me everything that's in the schematic that has a panel um, item. So panel item being a model or a, um, if I click on it, you can see here, that's the actual physical part. Um, so the different um, circuit breakers, so the six different circuit breakers that I've created all obviously have their respective um, panel part. So I can actually click and drag. So normally speaking, I can actually highlight everything and I can place it and it'll actually place them all as a group. Um, however, what I'm going to do for this particular example is I'm going to pull up a, um, a mount first. So there is um, a few different mounts here. Um, as you can see here, they are manufacturable parts. Um, if I right click on the component properties, you can see this particular one, so weed miller, for example. Um, so I can actually come in, I can drag it in and place it into the project should fit. In this particular example, it's too big. Um, so I'll bring in one of these smaller one ones. If I can make it fit. Um, okay, so I'll start with this one. So this one is a, a Phoenix contact. Okay, cool. So, the difference is if I just create a generic miscellaneous block for now um, and click this one out. So you can E3 series and the database actually understand that this particular or each component has different mounting capability. So if I click and drag this one out, um, like so, you can see the pink straight away. So if I try to mount it to this rail, you can see down the bottom left, it's not actually letting me out. Uh, sign it. However, with this rail type, because it's a matching one, I can actually click and drag and I can place it quite easily. Um, further to that, you start to see some dotted lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this one over. I'll get rid of this guy. And I'm going to put a duplicate of this rail and I'm just going to place the remainder on this line, on this mount. Okay, cool. So you see all my dotted lines, my red dotted lines actually showing me that, hey, these are connected from my schematic from this to this. Now, what you can do is actually automate that further. So I'm just going to create a cable duct and I'll just put it in now just quickly. And then I'm going to copy some over just to make life quite easy. I'm going to put one there. I'm going to put one below. Again, it's going to tell me when there's an interference because it's a physical, not a schematic anymore. So I'm just going to place that here and extend them over like so. Okay, cool. So all I need to do now is have the correct cable gauge and, and everything selected and um, I can actually highlight everything and I can click my auto connect function. So you can see now automatically it's actually routed all these based on the schematic. It's actually done it to the shortest um, distance as well. So if I had another duct here um, on this particular side and I once again selected everything and panel. It actually routed it to the shortest, um, the path of least resistance. Similarly speaking, if you look over here, the blue thickness, it actually represents the thickness of the cables within the duct. So once that duct does fill up, it would actually seek to route it in an alternate path. Um, so it does have a fair bit of fail safe. So now that it's done it automatically, it's actually, this is to scale. So I can actually select this particular cable and as you can see highlights, it's actually just going from there to there. So I can right click, I can actually hover over it and it's going to tell me that the length is 240 millimeters. So what that's actually doing is once I've got my panel set up, it's actually going to give me the cut length exactly to the, to the, um, to the requirement based on what you've done and obviously writing them accordingly. So you can actually create, um, there's a tool here. So if I go E3 and there's a, um, Excel documents and there's a wiring list from panel. So I'll just bring this one up quickly. And it's actually going to create a table for me um, for every single wire cut, quite simply. So I'll just open it up. And as you can see, so it's giving me a from, a to, a wiring number, 
a wiring type, a color, a cross section. So I've just left this the same cable and color just to make life a bit easier. And it tells me every single length of every single cable to the millimeter. So it's actually giving me a fair bit of um, significance. At the same time, it does give me a overall length. So it's gonna give you, um, help you with costing. So it will actually tell you the ducting path as well. So all this information can actually be given to your assembly workers and then they'll be able to um, manufacture to that information. So obviously they've got the component from, to, and then they'll be able to trace the wire, the, select the wire type, which should be pre-cut, shouldn't be necessary. And then you can um, route it according to the path. Now this information is obviously in Excel. So the best thing about that is you can actually export it to other information. So whether you've got a costing information or something like that, or if you've got automate cutter machines, you can actually export it from there and actually automate your process a bit more. So with the panel, uh, you can go a bit further so that you can actually um, view it in 3D. I'll just zoom in a little so you can see it here. Um, now, the other thing that exists, some of these actually have step files like so. So you can actually import step file information into it and you can actually create it relatively straightforward um, 3D representation. Uh, the good thing about this over a conventional, obviously um, apart from the ease and the time taken to actually create this um, panel, um, it actually um, doesn't take a lot of resources from your PC. As you can see, I can move quite freely um, and this particular PC is quite, um, it's definitely not an engineering PC, so it's actually quite handy in that sense. So at the same time, you can actually um, visualize there's a few different um, options and this particular one will give me the wires as a, their thickness as they're shown and you can see also the way the components are set up within e3 series they actually have a height or a um, uh, a position for the slots as well so it's actually calculating the length based on the position uh, within that so that you can see here obviously in the step file it's quite accurate and it's quite easy to see um, but it gives you that freedom um, and the accuracy based on your model. So this can actually be done quite quick, simply. So once you do create a component, you can add a step file. Otherwise, if you don't have a component, if you don't have a step file and you're creating a component, you can actually do something like this. So basically speaking, this is the outermost position of the component tree, and it does actually include your um, slot positions. All you really need to do is give it a position on the 2D and then give it an Z position. And then you can have your models uh, just like this, um, nice quickly um, represented. Otherwise you can actually have a 2D image placed on top. So they're not necessarily a 3D, um, but you can actually just put a 2D image and place it accordingly. Um, so this is a quite simple one. I'm just gonna open up something a bit more complex just to give you an idea of the capabilities. Um, but the good thing about this is your schematic and your panel will be um, synonymous. They will match and have the same logic. So you're not doubling up on work. At the same time, you're making sure that the, um, the project is all um, tied up accordingly. So I'll bring this one in 3D um, so you can see it a bit better. So this is just a panel for this cooling water pump um, that we have. So once I zoom in, you can see here, uh, once again, I'll just throw on the um, step file and you can see here as some components um, don't necessarily have them but everything else is wired um, accordingly uh, throughout the box including components uh, such as master switches which are half in half out so you can see quite quickly uh, you can create a pretty dense model um, and again it doesn't take much computer resourcing so it becomes quite easy at the same time the um, the terminals uh, worked quite quite well uh, and you can actually generate reports for the terminals automatically so again um, if i bring it up over here these reports get generated automatically these are just sheet of reports uh, otherwise you can actually export this to excel and once again you can use that information to um, use third-party software or anything else or any internal systems to, to work it out whichever way you need to uh, similarly, you can actually break down the panel into um, individual um, panels as such. So instead of having a full box, you can have the individual panels. Um, so you can actually uh, allow a fair bit of freedom. 
The good thing is, I mean, the main benefit really of doing it this way is trackability and keeping everything static, as you can see from before. So this was created in the same sort of manner. The schematic was created first, and then the panel was uh, automatically placed. So I can go to this particular component. So you can see this one's F1, uh, similar to what we just did. So I can quickly click on this component, and I can actually whoop, can highlight it should I need to. Otherwise, I can jump. I can jump to the schematic. So you can see here it's bringing me to the schematic of that particular panel. So every time there's a um, panel and a schematic symbol, uh, you can see here obviously. This Q1 is connected to that F1. So if I go to this Q1 and I jump to panel, and then you can actually be able to see um, that cable there, you can actually see how it goes from uh, F1 to Q1. So the good thing is if I make a change in my panel, in my schematic, it will keep the logic and it'll follow through and it'll mimic it as well. So if I make a slight change in componentry, if I swap out a component in place of, so I can actually click here, I can go to device properties and I can actually replace this component with another one in, in line and it's gonna keep my connections and everything else. So it's actually gonna mimic it in the circuit diagrams um, in the schematics. It's gonna keep the same sort of logic. Because it understands that this particular component, which is F1, um, if I just jump to the device tree, um, this one F1 component obviously um, has the main thing and it also includes the panel as well. So the benefit again, once again, of using Zucan E3 series is uh, the logic that sits within it. Um, not only the database, but obviously the um, behind the scenes work. So once you do create a project once, you don't have to mimic and redo them every time. So you can actually design from a panel should you need to, and then you can mimic the, um, you can actually place the schematic symbols um, and create a schematic for it. Otherwise uh, you can start with a design or a schematic, and then you can go through and create a panel automatically based on your schematic. So once you have done and mapped out your logic, it's quite simple to create a different view and replicate your work um, as best as possible. Similarly speaking, there are different um, uh, routing bridge options um, and, and sort of talking with third party software. So you can actually export um, <coughs> connections and wires out to 3D modeling software should you need to. But obviously um, the benefit of, well, the ease of use of, of using the panel module in, in Zucan E3 is, is quite, um, quite beneficial.